Tony Middlesbrough, obviously, uh, uh, just wonder what your thoughts on them. Our club, you know very well. And um, is it still a bit strange being on this side of the weird starter? <laughs> Is it strange? You know, I've been here a year or so now. We've played them twice, have we, yeah, in my tenure. Um, yeah, it, listen, it's a big game but for me. I live on Teesside, of course. Um, everybody I bump into wants to talk football. They obviously had a tough start, but they've turned it around. They've won the last four games. And um, when I'm watching, you know, they're a very well coached team. They've got good rotations, good identity. We know how they play um, we have to try and um, be aware of their strengths and weaknesses really and let's see how the game goes but they've got some good players obviously You've talked about a lot of teams coming here with a low block and, and trying to frustrate you but Middlesbrough play really expansive football I and mean, do you think it will be a very different game today uh, sorry this weekend or over um, I think they, they play, when you look at them, I mean, look at the two coaches, they're both from Manchester United, they, they both play very, very similar football, Ipswich and um, and Middlesbrough. They both push their left full back on, they both roll their left winger inside, create two tens, play out with a back three. They're, they're very, very similar. It's. Um, yeah, they seem to have maybe took a bit of time to gel with the new players, but they play the same system that they they play, and um, and I think he's just been trying to acclimatise his new players because he lost a lot of quality in the summer. Some loans obviously went back to their parent clubs, and you know Akpom was obviously sold to uh, to Holland, and um, yeah, he's probably just been getting the players into the system, I would suggest, and. Um, looks by the results as if it's coming together for them so um, it's going to be a tough test for us and a game that we have to be at our best to, to give them problems. Last season when you beat them it was Stuart and Allard with the goals and they're not an option for you this time but it hasn't looked like a problem so far, you've got plenty of other options. Well we've been spreading the goals around I think um, you know, long may that continue. Really, I've, uh, as I've always said, you, you need to score a certain amount of goals if you want to end up at the right end of the table. And um, it's better to have goals from everywhere rather than one guy scoring all the goals and he gets injured and then your goals are dry up. So, yeah, we do, we're doing okay. The team are, are functioning all right. And um, as I say, long may the goals come from everywhere. But. Uh, you know, we at Tears Derby is, is, I think they, you know, I, I never had any fear for them. You know, people would be saying after seven games that they hadn't won a match that, you know, it was going to be a tough, long season. And yet the data and the stats were telling us that they were still creating lots of chances and still had lots of ball possession and still playing pretty well. They just weren't taking their chances. And um, so they've maybe turned that round now and let's wait and see. But um, it'll be, it'll be an, an emotional, passionate game again, a big crowd. Um, let's see. Every game is a tight game. The margins in this league are, are very tight. You know, it's so. Um, we will look forward to it. Um, they've had an extra day's breather. They played Tuesday. We played Wednesday, of course. We played on Saturday morning, which is a tight turnaround for us. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. What do you think the weirdest derby means in the North East now? I mean, do you think it's bigger because Newcastle are kind of doing their own things? I don't, I don't know, to be honest. I, I obviously played in lots of them. I think, I think if you ask Sunderland supporters, there's only one big derby for them in my mind. Um, Middlesbrough, you know, is still a little stuck. Middlesbrough would, would consider both Sunderland and Newcastle as big derby games. Um, maybe even Leeds is a huge game, you know, similar sort of distances, just the other way a bit. Um, and yet not like, you know, tying away a derby, I'm pretty sure. So, um, yeah. We should just look forward to it. It's, 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 it's three points at stake. I, I, I don't want to build it up to anything other than two decent teams on good form, trying to win a, a football match. Really, you know, we're on decent form, and they're obviously on good form, um, having won the last four. So, yeah, let's bring it on. Do you like derbies generally? <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I think uh, they're great when you win. They're not very good when you lose. Um, they're passionate, emotional. Um, yeah, it was good last last year at home. It's 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 only like bragging rights really, and yet I'm, I'm not the sort of person personally who has. I'm not interested in bragging rights really. You know, if we get beat, and I know for a few weeks, everybody I bump into will will have been at the match. You know, it. Um, and yet, if we win, nobody says anything for a couple of weeks. You know, it's so let's uh, let's see. I, I I totally respect Michael and his team, and and uh, you know I never had any fears because I I still you know I grew up from the age of six going to watch <coughs> watch the Borough play, and then I played for them and captained them and um, managed them, and so you know, it'd be wrong for me to say it doesn't matter to me. They're just another team. They um, I watch for their result, of course I do, and I want them to do really well, but obviously not against us. And I want us to finish above them in the league and get more points and uh, and win the games when we play them. So um, yeah, looking forward to, to that point. But I know it's a you know I, as I say most weeks it's a dangerous game. They've got obvious threats, um, and yet if we'd have played them four weeks ago, we might have think oh listen, they haven't won seven matches yet. You know what I mean? It's a, it, we should be going into this really confident. And yet we I've always said that. The data was telling us that they're a decent team, and now they're turning the data into results, and um, and so yeah, we, we're very conscious of how tough it's going to be. And if it's the dinner table tonight or the breakfast table tomorrow, will it get discussed in, in the family home? Not really. I think I think not. The football won't. I, uh, my son's only interested in his tickets, really, making sure he's coming, and um, and for the wife, I, I don't know. Really, let my loved ones come to football matches. I, th I don't think it's for me. It's it's. I, I don't want them in this environment. Um, but they do want to come to this one, and so they shall. And um, yeah, that, that's, I'm pretty sure the football match won't get mentioned. Um, and if we win, I won't be rubbing it in my son's face. And if we, if he, if they win, he probably will rub it in my face. You know, but, um, but we'll see. Um, just. Injury situations. Is there any any new concerns after Wednesday night, or is it what sort of what you have for Wednesday? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I don't. I don't think Pritch is worth us risking. Um, the the pleasing thing for me is that you know Adji's back on the training ground every day now for the last three or four days. Um, Eliza Meander's on the training ground and looking really strong and powerful. He's. Um, they're obviously not ready. They need to play a 21s game over the next week or two. Um, but yeah, as, as most football clubs, you know, you, you pick up a few injuries and a few come back, and then it's sort of that that cycle rolls really. And so that's why you have to keep them all playing. They have to play 21s games. They have to train in the afternoons and keep their loads up and keep doing the meterage to make sure that when they're asked to play in the first team they're ready and they're not no excuses for them so um i think we're all right we're in a decent place at um, you know every coach would want all of their team fit all of the time to pick the best team in their minds and yet it's never the case because you never have everybody fit thank you cheers so uh, you're one of the four teams in the championship at the moment i think that's fair to say and even though form can be irrelevant in games like this with a bit of rivalry, should we all go into this in the best way possible? Um. Yeah, I think so. I think we've got some pretty key players injured at the moment, to, to be honest. And yet, the lads who've come in have have kept the momentum going, and um, you know we've been pretty consistent with our performance. Even the game we lost against Cardiff, we thought the performance level was pretty consistent, and. Um, we believe we'll go into this game and give a good account of ourselves, and that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. Of course, as um, you know, Middlesbrough went to Watford and won three-two in their last away game, so um, they'll be pretty confident as well. Hopefully, it's a hopefully it's a great game of football. Lots of lots of um, excitement for the crowd, and uh, and we win at the end of it. Just on the crowd, there, how important will they be tomorrow? They're always important. It's it's you know it's an amazing place to come and play. Um, I talk to the players about that. You know who do you play for? Do you play for yourself? Do you play for your family? Do you do you play for the supporters? It's um, the supporters make it an emotional occasion. Every football match, home and away, and it's important that we um, 
find performances to make sure that if they've travelled a long way and spent a lot of money to come and watch us, that they see their support in the team that is fighting and working hard and trying, excuse me, trying to win a football match. Have you been impressed with the job Michael Carrick's done at Middlesbrough? I, I fail to think that you, can, you can't be anything other than impressed, really. I think um, people started asking questions, I think, you know, seven games without a win at the start of this season. It's um, on the back of losing a lot of high-quality footballers last last year. Again, this is part of the reason why you have to be careful with loans, I think, because the loans ultimately go back. Um, and whether you've your recruitment's right and you can replace the quality of a Premier League player coming into your club, with more quality and um, and I think they've found that challenging as as I know I have as a, as a coach over my career when these really talented Premier League players that you've got even though they're very young leave your club and go back to their parent club and get game time for them you have to be able to replace them and um, and it, it appears that they've been bedding in a few players that they've signed early on in the season and um, but if you're looking just at results that is I, I'd have to say to you, I, I haven't seen Middlesbrough. I don't study Middlesbrough other than this week, and, and I say this week, the last two days, really, um, watching their games. They, as I say, they've got an identity, a way of playing. They've got certain rotations that they work on the pitch, and um, yeah, and they're a good team. So we have to be respectful of that, and. Um, yeah, we'll give it our best shot. We'll be hopefully be conscious of their strengths, but I'm sure they'll have watched us and be conscious of our strengths and weaknesses. And um, it'll be an interesting game, I'm sure.